being Pakistani, we tend to be more emotional. You know, I'm getting more inspired by people here than yeah. the other way around. The hard thing with racing is you have to carry that speed in the corners. That's where the bravery comes in because then that's where the talent comes in. And then by the time I was 11, 12, I was racing in the British Championship. Nice. And then when I was 12, I was British Champion in go-karting. They don't want me to get distracted by anything. So even for me, I'm not interested in having a serious relationship or getting married until I'm my racing career, until I've achieved what I've wanted to achieve. And then it starts winding down, then I'll start looking at it. अगर आप रेसिंग फॉलो करते हैं तो अभी इंडी प्रो टू थाउजेंड हैज रैप्ड अप एंड उसके थर्ड स्लॉट पे थर्ड टाइटल पे आए हैं पाकिस्तानी ब्रिटिश बॉर्न पाकिस्तानी इनाम अहमद तो इनाम अहमद हमारे साथ हैं वो पाकिस्तान आए हैं विजिट करने बिकॉज अभी यू नो ही इट्स इज होम एंड ही शुड कम हेयर एंड मीट पीपल एंड इंस्पायर पीपल सो इनाम आर यू इंस्पायरिंग पीपल So, uh, I don't know. You have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm getting more inspired by people here than yeah. the other way around. I think I think a lot of these uh, we call them shapater uh, londe. Uh, they they go on bikes and they lay down on bikes and ride them and they do a lot of speeding. Like I'm sure they're inspired by you because they can see that racing can actually be a sport which is not existing in uh, pakistan it doesn't exist no i mean unfortunately not because i really think that uh, innately genetically as pakistanis we're very good at piloting machinery yeah like not just with racing like look at our air force our pilots how good they are and i mean if i'm the, so far i'm the only pakistani to, to do this i mean there probably is a lot of people that are better than this at me in this country but we just got to find them yeah No no that's that's very uh, that's very true and plus we are so used to performing under pressure we have no bijli no electricity no gas no <laughs> no proper roads yet we still uh, you know pr- try to perform and that that shows resilience and uh, amazing uh, so what's the fastest speed you've uh, reached but 210 miles an hour 210 miles yeah Uh, uh, what, what do you feel? Do you even can you even see uh, uh, where you go? I going? mean, to be honest, when you do two hundred and ten in a straight, it's, it's no problem. It's easy. Okay, I mean, anyone can do it. Yeah. But the hard thing with racing is you have to carry that speed in the corners. That's where the bravery comes in because then that's where the talent comes because yeah. you've got to feel the grip you've got underneath you. You've got to feel the machine. You've got to understand how to drive that machine on on the limit of its capability. Mm-hmm. Whether whether it's tires. uh the chassis the engine yeah. and that's the difference between a, a good driver and a and a bad one the turns the turns that uh, yeah it's all it's all in the corners that's corners. why you make up the time so how did you start can you tell us a little bit about how where did you start so um my did you steal your dad's car and uh no not uh, quite <laughs> <laughs> not quite uh later <laughs> but um i started uh when i was 8 years old okay um my father's friend uh took me to a track in north london in mm. go karting and then uh I, i really liked it and then my mother didn't didn't want me to do it uh but yeah, i convinced mothers her to don't want you to do anything yes. they want you to stay at home exactly. and somehow and study I... <laughs> <laughs> which i didn't do so you know, i wanted to be a racing driver so okay. um yeah so i started and we did small races i convinced my mother to let me do it that. and um So then from 8 9 10 years old I built my way up started in small local races then national races and then by the time I was 11 12 I was racing in the British Championship nice. then when I was 12 I was British Champion in go karting then when Isn't I was Isn't that very young to be even go I think a lot of adults do go karting right in that championship is there an age bracket there's different categories okay so there's a category at the time it was called cadet so cadet is like 8 to 12 years okay, old roughly right. and then you have juniors and seniors juniors is from about uh now it's 12 but when i was doing it, it was 13 to 15 okay uh then seniors is 15 to however old you want to be it. so juniors is from cadets to juniors is a big jump because yeah. cadets do like 50 miles an hour uh juniors is like 85 90 miles an hour okay and when you're like this low off the ground it's fast it's fast and um uh, seniors is only a little bit faster not that much yeah Um so after I won the British Championship the the next level is to go to do the World and European Championship in juniors not in cadet 
Now right. it's a step up. Um, if you want to be uh, a top racing driver, everyone starts in go karting. Everyone in every yeah. type of racing, you have to because you learn all the basics there: how to feel the grip, how to you know the mechanics, how to work with the engine, the carburetor, airbox, you know exhaust, yeah. how to tune things. Uh, and it's so competitive. Go karting is more the mo- every Formula One driver will say this: it's the most competitive uh, series you can do because there's so many more people doing it. It's thousands of kids from all over the world come to do it. The best. And it's so tight. I mean, I know I, I played uh, Mario go karting <laughs> on the. You know, remember that game? Yeah, yeah. Where you banana. throw stuff, so you you throw bananas at your opponents. Well, one, your- one thing I used to do was when we'd have the rolling start, where yeah. just before they wave the green flag, if you were next to me, basically the fuel tank in a go kart is in between your legs. That's a dangerous place for a. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the the fuel pipe would come out and go into the carburetor here. Right. So if your carburetor and fuel tanks here, yeah, I would uh, reach over. I'd go very close to you, and I'd pinch it, and I'd stop the fuel from going. And in. I would think you're fist bumping me. No, but you wouldn't you're notice. Not. You you'd be looking ahead. I was. You there. wouldn't notice because you have the helmet on everything. And then whilst I'm doing that, your engine would cut. <laughs> and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Game <laughs> over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but they banned that now. So. Uh, <laughs> I thought I had a chance, but uh, no, I don't now. No. Okay. <laughs> well, you can race me at Omni Card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. And then, so I didn't never expected this, but when I was fourteen, I I, I became the world champion in go karting. Wow! And it's one of the biggest achievements I've ever done because even most Formula One drivers didn't become world champion. It's no. so hard to become a world champion in go karting. I never expected it. Honestly, I never expected it. I. Uh, I, t- I took everything step by step, and, I, and w- I saw a picture of your dad. He seems like a very cool. He doesn't seem like a like a typical dad. He seems no, like a very I, cool. I mean, hip, to be honest, actually, dad. my my dad's always been very relaxed. Yeah. Um, not not to say anything about being Pakistani fathers, but like in general, you have something <laughs> called racing racing dads. Okay. And racing dads are known to be very like nightmares because they're so hard on the kids and they're basically like shouting at them. They put so much pressure. Oh. And my dad was always very, very relaxed. And if I fail or make mistakes, he'd never punish me for it. He just say, just learn for it and you keep getting better because nice. he, he always believed that I could get there and become a champion. Oh. So he was relaxed and he knew I, I was very determined and I, I was... I was always my harshest critic. Yeah. I was always, I'm always still been very hard on myself, very hard on myself. I don't need someone to tell me that I've done something wrong. I think people who are, uh, who are great at what they do, I've noticed this one thing in all of them is that they don't need haters. No. Uh, they don't need someone to give them constructive criticism. They just always trying to do, uh, learn from their failure and trying to excel. They don't need anyone. They, they are the, they're the worst, um, you know, hard, hard, hardest, not the worst, hardest uh, critics, you know? No, I, I agree with that. But it, that's also, that can be a negative as well. There's uh, been stages in my life where um, you can be too hard on yourself where you bring yourself down and you lose confidence. That's also not good. Um, it's, it's a balance. Yeah. Um, I've learned with age how to handle that. I think being Pakistani, we tend to be more emotional than more, most people, <laughs> that's, you know, so that's, that's why I was very happy to hear that you have a very cool, relaxed dad Yeah. because most of the pe- dads, you know, he's breaking stereotypes because uh, a lot of Pakistani dads would be like, better doctor, doctor or engineer, so that is something that they after you to get married. No, my parents don't want me They're to like, get married. No, my parents, <laughs> my parents, my, my mom actually, believe it or not, does not want me to get married. Oh, really? Uh, really, she, really, she does not. Because also my, my parents know how much effort that as a family we've put into this. Yeah. And for me, they don't want me to get distracted by anything. So even for me, I'm not interested in having a serious relationship or getting married until I'm my racing career, until I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. And then it starts winding down. Then I'll start looking at it up until now. It, to be honest, it's a waste of time for me and it's a distraction because whether you realize it or not, when you're having another person as a partner, you're accountable for them. Uh, mm, you know, you true. have to please them as well. Yeah. You, you, you know, my job takes me from one end of the world mm. to the other. I have to be able to move like that. I have yeah. to jump here, do this, do that. And, you know, it, it never works. Yeah. So I've always been a lone wolf kind of person. I don't really need friends. I don't need, uh, 
definitely don't need uh, relationships. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I always been a, a lone wolf like that and I always yeah. preferred it, you know. That's good. That's that means you're focused, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um so what for for the Pakistani audience because uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people like me who are uh, not educated about what's the difference between, you know, uh, we we recently had this funny meme uh, where these kids made this formula one car and they went on a show and the, uh, and the lady that. asked, uh, uh, is, it, is it a formula or is it a car? <laughs> <laughs>
and uh, 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 the, the sponsor side of it because 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 okay now you're a good racer you you want a race but you need this amazing expensive yeah. car um how do you go about uh, that In- so so i um so as a driver we don't supply the car i get contracted by a team to drive their car right i understand so yeah. they 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 contract me for my services how do you how do you get that contract if you're good every team will want to sign you just like with any sport just like so any you, cricket team you yeah. know if you're the best bowler they're going to want to take you yeah. it's the same with racing okay. so if you're the one of the best drivers a team's going to want to so contract right now you. you're with what team uh i'm with well i was with team hunkers uh it's an american team uh, okay I'm not sure which team I'll be with next year. I'm in contract negotiations with a few teams. Okay. Uh so let's see. Uh, I really don't know. I can't talk about that. Yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Yeah. Moving on. So uh, uh you were t- you were talking about um race uh, you were explaining the fact that uh, um that in 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 this this formula racing car sport is more european and uh, more more popular in Euro- europe europe and america uh how come how come it hasn't ca- caught on in other countries what well, in be, your view to be honest it's really big in japan okay because honda nissan toyota the yeah. ra- the formula one is massive in japan it's the biggest sport in japan europe now globally formula one is the fastest growing and biggest sport in the world hmm. because of the netflix show drive to survive i don't know if you ever seen yes, that yes i have because of I drive have. to survive people know so much more about racing before drive to survive uh people were not that interested in racing they mm-hmm. didn't understand it which is fair enough i mean i didn't understand it when i joined i watched that film by ron howard about rush rush yeah. oh that well, that's a good amazing. movie yeah that's, yeah. Movie. that's my favorite movie yeah, yeah. that is a cool movie um so in europe formula 1 is probably the biggest sport right now yeah in america formula 1 has got massive because they could never they could never puncture the american market for whatever they, reason they had that nascar thing right yeah but nascar is not my thing i'm not i'm not really been it no it's an american thing it's right? american thing. It's they, a, yeah. they race on ovals and their yeah. stock cars it's, it's not it's not really something that i'm interested in okay. i've always liked formula style cars because the thing is formula cars you have to be so committed when you're driving yeah because the, the car can do things that you your brain can't imagine mm. like the the, the grip the the how committed you have to be to the corners like you have to always feel like you're out of breath mm. and it's non-stop any other car it the threshold is much lower so you don't need to push it as hard to get to the limit formula cars you just like you're always you have to be so brave and you have to carry so much speed yeah. so much speed around these corners and the concrete walls are just there and that's why it's like your eyes are like this you know you're like wow you know it's it's amazing and that's why that's my favorite and w- w- what's the like for for example a uh, cricketer or 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 any other sportsman will need a certain physique um for for that sport what what is your physical routine what kind of body do you have to have is it good to be thinner um, um and 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 when you're when you're a driver in racing you need to be as light as possible but still be as strong as you can to yeah. handle the g force yeah. because if you speak to a fighter pilot in the air force when they're in the turns and they're pulling they do between 4 5 6 sometimes 7 8 g uh in in formula racing formula 3 formula 2 formula 1 yeah indica we do 4 sometimes 5 g same like a fighter pilot yeah. so to be able to to hold that to yeah. be able to be able to um your body to handle that you have to be very strong and fit in the muscles your neck has to be strong because yeah. when we're wearing the helmet and i turn for a corner my head doesn't want to go that way it wants yeah. to go that way yeah. and when when you're wearing a helmet so my my head what well, the head's like 10 15 kilos weighs now when i'm in a corner at 4 5 g it's 4 to 5 times heavier it feels 4 to 5 times Plus heavier you have the- and i have the helmet so my head weighs 50 60 kilos so your neck has to be extremely strong um, and i saw so so you in the gym doing those yeah and then also cardiovascular you have to be very good because in the cockpit it gets 75 80 degrees celsius so like so you actually get you ready for yeah. it <laughs> i should just do i'm just going to do my 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 training here in karate yeah. now actually but i'm just do it outside it's the same thing yeah. and then uh, so when you're in the cockpit it, it gets very hot yeah. and also to be able to change all the things in the car while you're driving and race to race consistently you have right. to be very fit because if you're not fit you get tired much quicker and if you get tired quicker 
you make a lot more mistakes mm. and you have a much higher risk of crashing and hurting yourself. Okay. So that's why we stay fit. So we can be consistent and we can drive the car on the limit consistently because driving a racing car on the limit is very tiring, very, very tiring. But to drive it on the limit every lap for two and a half hours, when you have 20 crazy guys behind you <laughs> trying to thrash you, and then you have another five guys in front of you, you have to overtake. It's hard. That sounds it's like intense. in a dog, you're in a, you're in a war, you're in a dog fight, just like a fighter pilot where the guys are trying to kill you behind. Like if I slow down, if I just like, like don't be brave or something, then the guy's going to attack me no, straight away. So it's not even a thing. Has that become a part of your personality now that you enjoy speed? You, I, a thrill. I, I, are you a thrill junkie now? I'm a thrill junkie. I am. Uh, <laughs> I did the highest bungee jump in the world. Oh really? Yeah, the in Chi- Macau. China one. Right? In Macau. Oh, how was it? That was good. I actually, that was during a race weekend. I did the race the next day. Really? <laughs> yeah, me and the drivers, we all did yeah. it. We all of us did it. Like it was really fun. And um, the thing is, I was I was a quiet kid yeah. growing up. I I was not that good at sports. I was good at school, but nothing special. Yeah. Um, but I found myself when I started racing, and I had to force myself to become confident and to become aggressive mm. over ten years, fifteen mm. years. Because if I didn't become aggressive, if I didn't become brave, I would have been, I would have stopped a long time ago. I would mm. not have been good. I had to force myself. But now, over the last eight, nine years, it's second nature to me. Like, I, I, it's just who I am now. I'm a very um, aggressive. Um, aggressive person. Oh, Impulsive you don't look aggressive. On the, on, the, on the race course, you're aggressive. But you get to know me, then you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Even in my decision, in my decision making, when I'm doing business, things yeah. like that, yeah, I, I don't put up with like, any shit or anything. That's good. That's how yeah. it should be. Yeah, I think Pakistanis need to learn that. I feel like we're not, uh, we're aggressive at uh, with our friends and out in traffic, but we're not aggressive at work. I feel like, and plus, in in a country like Pakistan, uh, you have to do everything yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, by, by like ab- abroad, you when you have a, a whole ecosystem. Then you have the managers, you have this and that, and but in here you have to be your own everything. So, but so. to be honest, it was like that for me and my dad because when we started, no one helped us. Yeah, we didn't know anything. I mean, we were two desi guys yeah. coming in, and we were the first ones. It was, it's a very did um, you did you face any racism or any? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do yeah. because it's a very elitist sport. It's it's it's. The most undiverse sport in the world. I mean, there's no, hardly any colored people. I mean, me, Lewis Hamilton, there's maybe, I can't count more than four or five in the whole of motorsport in the whole world that are colored. It's not, not diverse. It's getting better slowly now, but like did that, now. Like, did, you know. did anything, uh, uh, do you, can you recall an incident? Well, yeah, I've been, I've been called, you know, hacky, things like that when I was growing up. Um, I used to get bullied on the tracks a lot because you're not at school. So they can do what you want. They yeah. can do what they want to you. The they can beat world. you up. They can do, yeah. yeah, they can do whatever they want. So that used to happen. But then my dad always told me, just beat them on the track. Yeah. You're going to screw with their head if you just thrash them on the track. And that's what I did. So, okay, I was a skinny kid, couldn't do that much. But when I got on the track, I teach them the lesson back. Because in go-karting, you can, you can use the bumpers a lot more. Mm. So if anyone pissed me off when I was off, that's when I'd go behind them, for example, if they break for a corner, I just keep full on the gas and I'd hit them and they'd, they'd go straight to the wall, like a <laughs> ping pong ball. <laughs> you know? And then they wouldn't Love do it again. It. Yeah. They would never call your names again. No. They'd be like, yeah. No, we- because they know I'm crazy. I mean, I'm willing to <laughs> crash myself into them and hurt myself just so they get hurt. You know, that's, that's how it is. That's <laughs> the way I've always been. Damn, man. That's, that's, that's impressive. I'm really... I'm really happy that uh, I, I got to meet you. I mean, uh, this is amazing to to see um, someone. You know, I, I have mad respect for people who push those boundaries and and f- go into a sport where no Pakistani uh, has gone before and mm-hmm. and prove go into their sport. Oh, Lagan moment, okay? Na, okay. You know, uh, have you seen Lagan? No. Okay. There's this movie Lagan Amir Khan's, and uh, they they basically, uh, you know, Britishers um, cricket is a Britishers sport. Yeah. So so when they ruled India, uh, they they challenged these uh, uh, villagers for a yeah. cricket match, and they said if you win, we'll we'll not 
take any tax from you and uh, they're laughing because yeah, they go like oh it's our sport i'm sure yeah, yeah. these indians will we, not we don't have the, the mental capacity yeah. to do it but they, but they beat them and yeah. and and you know and uh, and that i think that movie uh, movie won an oscar or was nominated for it so so it's just the uh, amazing story that you have uh, what's the most important um aspect in your sport what is specific to your sport that needs to be on lock you got to be tough in the head hmm. because you're going to fail a lot i failed a lot of times like yeah. okay i've won a lot but there's been many times when my career was finished actually um you have to be tough and you can have the self belief but not many people can have the self belief even when it looks like there's no way out yeah. there's no way you're going to carry on even you look there's been stages my family myself have sacrificed everything for me to race and then imagine 10 15 years of hard work and then it comes to a stage where you looks like you're not going to race anymore or things are not going well mm. but you have to be tough because also the hardest thing in racing you have to always beat your teammate you cannot lose to your teammate yeah. if you lose to your teammate because he's in the same car as you because usually teams have two three cars mm. with different drivers um it's not a good thing if you lose to your teammate um and when you have a teammate that's really good and as talented as you it's tough <laughs> because then you know it's a pain in your ass yeah. you know and you can't lose to him and uh there's many things that I've learned about how to psychologically um evaluate a teammate how to get into his head if i can't necessarily beat him on the track sometimes you have teammates that are just so fast and you just like how the hell does he do that uh the only way you can beat him is in the racing and getting in his head which i used to do as well mm. playing the game it's like poker as well mm. you know there's so many different aspects to racing it's not just driving it's the f- mental approach the fitness the political you got to be very politically correct you got to understand how to play the game with all these teams all these manufacturers there's a lot of money involved you know you got to be the right place at the right time you got to know how to handle your teammates but you have to beat him mm. you have to beat him and um there's so many things um that's where that's um what 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 kind of advice do you have for people who are doing sports in pakistan uh and they don't have that support um well i didn't have any support to be honest yeah. most of my career actually if if i will say something i got told this by a very old man <laughs> who believed in me and he was he's been very good to me uh he used to be in formula 1 i can't say who his name is but he's very influential man mm. he always said to me in am winners never quit and quitters never win so mm. whenever i feel like there's no way out i always just say that to myself because i really believe you're not just going to be you're not just going to fail once you're going to fail so many times that you can't even count i've failed like 20 30 40 50 times man like and everyone t- i have i've raced people that were really good but they all quit mm. and like I've still carried on and it's just starting to pay off now but still in the future there's going to be many times where it's going to be hard it's a very high pressure sport um and you really can't quit I mean the only time I'll quit is when I'm dead yeah damn but, you know what's the point I believe this is what I was supposed to do racing I mean why else would I've done all this hard work all these achievements what for nothing so that's why I'm not going to quit that's pretty cool and um, I I think um पाकिस्तानियों अगर ऐसे लोग हमारे आ, आ, हमारी नेशन का हिस्सा हैं और जो हमें इंस्पायर कर रहे हैं जो हमें दिखा रहे हैं कि एट सच ए यंग एज डूइंग सो मच हैज ऑलरेडी अचीव सो मच एंड आई एम श्योर यू गोट डू ग्रेट थिंग्स आई हैव फुल फेथ इन इट जस्ट बाय मीटिंग यू फॉर एन आर आई कैन आई कैन फील दैट आई हैव you know you have uh, all our support thank you and uh, all our love and i wish you all the best and uh, is, is there anything that people watching can do to support you somehow um, um what 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 can we do follow me on social media <laughs> follow, <laughs> my, follow my, on our social my, media my instagram is <laughs> at inam official yeah we'll write it we'll write yeah, it down here and um actually i document my racing journey on youtube okay as well okay uh, if you guys want to see what i did this year yeah. my youtube channel is inam ahmed uh next year my races as well i will be yeah. uh showing i have my videographer follow me my friend Good. elijah and uh just i'd love to see some more pakistani flags at the race track in america next year that would be nice 
I think I think uh, you have opened the gate and uh, you are a pioneer and I'm sure that you will inspire many others to follow that uh, path and do great. Inshallah, yes. Yeah. And in the future, when what's my racing career, when I wanted to achieve what I wanted to achieve, and it looks like I'm winding down as I'm getting older, the next big thing for me is to find the next one that's way better than yeah. me because there is a lot of people here. And to be able to find me personally, fund them, find two or three drivers, you're from a young age, six, seven, eight years old. We have to find them. And then... Um, six, like, seven, eight, eight, six. Yeah, oh, well, I don't know if you watch Formula One, but the world champion right now, Max Verstappen, uh, he started when he was three. Three? Yeah. So before he was walking, like yeah, when he started walking. he was in walking. a go-kart before he was walking. <laughs> Damn. Damn, and, um, uh, thank you so much. But you know, the, the, that's, that's way ahead. For now, I'm just looking forward to seeing you do amazing things <laughs> uh, i think uh, b- b- the next podcast we'll do is when you become formula one champion inshallah and uh we'll have air conditioning by then. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll, we'll do this podcast uh, yeah i'll come i'll come to the, tr- the track, to track. yeah and of course we'll, we'll do it there i thank i you. have full faith in you thank, thank you, you for having me yeah. thank you for coming to the show i mean this guy is amazing Please follow him on Instagram. Follow his journey on YouTube. And uh, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.